Okay. Hello and welcome to the Mystery College Podcast. This is Jake uh, Zen, and today we'll be interviewing uh, Philip Harris Smith, and we'll be talking about a vocation. Welcome. Hiya. So I'm really curious about what your particular process to evocation is. Like, do you, do you usually go after Bardonian type work, or or is there tip, tip, is there a type of ceremonial magic that you're most inclined to? Well, I, I it's primarily Barden's approach now, but but before um, it would have been lots of grimoire stuff. Um, basically, I used to do other stuff when I wasn't good enough to do it Barden's way. I think it's perhaps the, the the most honest, you know, you the, the grimoire stuff I used to do because either I couldn't or didn't think I could do it with Barden's much more efficient and simpler approach. Mm. So I would I I would do stuff like Lemme Get On Arbatel, that kind of thing. Um, Shemham Four Ash Angels to a, a shoe stone, and and it was only when I made good progress with Barden's training that I was able to really generate a much more stripped down, less arduous approach to evocation yeah. and with the theurgy, uh, the Godhead work. And, you know, the, also the Kabbalah um, did, did facilitate that more easily after a period of time with that as well. Barden's Kabbalah, I mean, so, so really I did evocation as best I could until I could do it in in the way that I think is the most parsimonious, which is more or less what Barden outlines in his second book, Practice of Magical Evocation. Mm. So uh, that's 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 how I do things these days. Yeah, and I'm curious about like let's say what's the pro how is the process distinctly different in your experience when working with the Lemegaton or Arbatel versus Barden's approach? What are the well? Are let me talk that bit. Um, Th there's a distinct def in in my experience, and although I've discussed this online, and other people disagree, so I can only talk about how I approached those. There was much less theurgy, um, and therefore much less authority um, with the the spirits or the genii or the demons or whatever they were, and you you had various mechanisms to get around that problem. So, for example, with the goetia, um, you you pair the Goetic demon or spirit, whatever you want to call it, with a Shemham Forash angel. And you bring the Shemham Forash angel to a shoe stone. And once it's appeared visibly, you ask if the, the, the angel will help you with the specific Goetic entity you intend to evoke. And providing it agrees, and there may sometimes be parameters on what you can achieve with the Goetic spirit, the, 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 the angel may only be prepared to help you so far. You can then move on to the evocation of the, the Goetic spirit or the Goetic demon with, as it were, the backup of the angel if things go problematic. If, if, if that particular spirit starts to play up, you can call upon the angel to, to bring it back into line with what you want to, to be happening. And um, that, that obviously, that having... Um, having a, a, a sometimes called a thwarting angel, having a thwarting angel means that you don't really have the kind of divine authority that Barden specifies for evocation. You're, you're, you're getting around the problem, if you like. Hmm. Um, so the, the, the approach varies as you progress within, within the whole discipline of hermetic, you, as you get better, as you, as you, develop spiritually these kind of dodges become less necessary these kind of dodges become less necessary and instead yeah. <laughs> have divine authority through the practice of kabbalah or or through um which particular part of barden's evocation work well in in the final stages of initiation into hermetics you have this godhead work and it's that work that barden emphasizes is necessary when he looks at when he writes practice of magical evocation you need the godhead to be occurring in you to have correct and, and proper authority to evoke um, otherwise the genii will 
well, you all the all the ones that um, Barden specifies are the positive gene. I, they'll just probably ignore you politely. <laughs> Nothing. I doubt anything would happen. You need to have that godhead running for for a good deal of the time so that you can, with authority, have that gene. I um, pay attention to you. Be evoked. Gain the wisdom and, and interaction with that that gene. I from that. Yeah. So, so that's that's in my view the superior, the superior method of evocation. Yeah, and yeah, and um, have you? Uh, I'm I'm curious too, like if you could break down a little bit about uh, Franz Barton's evocation process. Like, you mm. know, on a, on a previous talk we were speaking, you you mentioned that part of what's really intriguing about Barton's system is 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 the mental the mental wandering aspect. Mm. Where you go into the mm. sphere, you communicate with beings there. And and then evoke them, invoke them, and vice versa. Mm. Well, with with Barden, you um, you as as he writes, the, the, the going to the sphere and experiencing the energies of the sphere and being, if you like, initiated into a planetary sphere, is kind of the the the, the developmental side of it, rather than the. But what 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 I found was that if you if if you did that to really kind of seal it and make it properly functional, you you do have to, um, usually more than once, have one of these planetary sphere genome manifests at our um, Earth level. And, um, you know, have them appear visibly in the triangle of art. And this, this seems to produce kind of a, um, a circuit of energy and I, I was writing about it a little while ago. I talked about something called planet shine. And um, what, what happens is that you feel the energy of the planet. And in, in my and my wife's case, it was literally all over our skin as if, imagine you were, apart from perhaps some, some briefs for modesty, you were lying on a, a, a sunbed in, in, in the Algarve or, or somewhere. You can feel the sun beating down on your skin. You get that feeling, but for all the planets, and you're not, you know, just in your briefs, you're in your normal clothes. Um, but you can feel this energy all over your skin, and it's distinctive to that planet. And when you've, when you've been to the, the sphere, um, you learn really cool stuff, and it's, it's really good. But then when you get some of these genii to appear visibly in a triangle, and you also interact with them in that way, what what subsequently happens is you get you get this it's almost like a confirmation that you've kind of been initiated into that um aspect of of the cosmos you've you you, you feel this this feeling of this planet shine is the only way i can put it that is all over your skin for a period of time and when it the, the only problem with that is that eventually it kind of coarsens because you know, you're you're the Earth's plane. You're surrounded by all sorts of mundane stuff, and you can, towards the end of that, it can become a little bit unpleasant. So you have to be careful with your diet and do some purification stuff because, as the energy fades, it does seem to become a little kind of icky around the edges as it as it wears off, which I suspect is the interaction with our normal mundane world. That's my theory on that, anyway. So the, you, yeah, you get a you get a kind of a circuit um, between the, the the sphere and and you on the Earth, and that 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 seems to it seems to me to be fairly initiatory actually as well. Hmm. So I'm curious about your experience with that afterglow effect, um, hmm. because you know on one hand it's one thing if you're working with beings from different spheres or different planetary spheres, but I'm I'm curious about what kind of if, if you experience something similar when you've worked with the limit get on. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's really something that's nasty. not Olympic spirits. It's, it's really rather nasty. My, one of my first works with Lemma get on, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, also, I did not have the wisdom of my wife. I ne hadn't met her at that time to, to, to rely on either. And um, I think one of the first ones I did was pretty much without any Shemham Forest angel work. It was just the lemmageton. So you had all the scourges and the tin. You put the seal in the tin and you heat it, and there's all sorts of stinky stuff in the tin, and it's all sorts of stuff like this. You, you do lots of ranting and barbarous names. And um, 
it, well, it didn't go too well. What, what, what happened was that um, if you just if you if you see horizontally someone spinning a ribbon on a stick, it looks like a helix from a distance, doesn't it? Mm. Well, if you look at it horizontally, I actually had that occur. I had no ribbons in the in the triangle. I didn't. I hadn't put any ribbons. There was a, literally a, a ribbon in the triangle for about two or three seconds. It literally rose up, and then it got. It was gone, and that was it. That was mm. all I had. And I was like, I was so I was so pleased when I had the ribbon thing. I thought, was it? Well, here it comes. You no, know, just the ribbon. And I, I like I say, there was no ribbon anywhere in the room. <laughs> but that's what I saw. And um, so I, I did all the, you know, the, the the stinky tin and the shouting and the sk- nothing. And and for about, I mean, I really, I really went as far as I could. About for about a week, I, f- I felt incredibly tense. All my muscles felt dreadful because I must have been incredibly tense and kind of in this kind of frenzy to get it done. And also, it was like I'd been dipped into some kind of caustic substance. So it was like a goetic shine, and it was really rather nasty. Mm. I really, it was really, it was like, it was like I had some kind of caustic stuff all over my skin. It was this faint burning, which took about a week to fade away. So that was, um, I think, I think that was a fairly tragic failure and uh, certainly an unpleasant one. And this, this, what I think is a, 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 an effect from another dimension was impacting on me. But, but obviously, I, I well, I, I to, obviously to me, I think that the, the dimension that that particular great spirit came from wasn't very nice. And that was what mm. I might have perhaps been experiencing. Mm. It, was, it was really unpleasant. I got to say, it was really, I, it took me about three or four months before I worked out a way to, to solve that problem. Mm. Um, you, 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 all, the, all the purifications you do beforehand, I just did them loads afterwards as well. And that seemed to help. I don't know if the rubric, it's, it's decades since I did that kind of stuff. But I forget if the rubric says you purify yourself afterwards or not. But yeah. I did. And that that seemed to help hugely. Yeah, I'm curious too. Um, you mentioned that like it's been it's been decades since you did that particular work. But I, I'm all, mm. I was I was curious to ask if you had, had worked with any other grimoires since having done Franz Barton's. Uh, not really, no. Yeah, not not really. Um, once once I I mean there is overlap for example the mercury genii yeah. are what I consider to be the Shemham Forash when I was doing the Grimoire work they, oh. they are the same things they are yeah. the same. they are angels or genii whatever you call them they're these pod, positive genii so there's overlap in that regard but I didn't I, I once I got you see Barda's method is very parsimonious once you have the theurgy in place hmm this godhead stuff you don't really need to bother with all the other i mean i i i wrote an essay that caused a bit of fuss online recently where, you know as barden rightly points out a large barrel hoop will suffice you don't need all this other stuff you don't need your your your, your scourge and your belt and your helmet and your you know you don't need all this paraphernalia and you don't need to memorize these conjurations and you don't need to you don't need to do any of that stuff. You 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 know you 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 just make sure the god hell is flowing in you as you do that, and then you 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 kind of reach out and and with the sigil you, the 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 genie will um, basically show up, and if you put enough effort in, it will show up visibly. Mm. Um, and and that so there's a much simpler and and I would say well uh, more beautiful. Um, approach to to magic mm. um but I, but i know that, that that would be a contentious opinion in some quarters so it's just my personal opinion yeah yeah and it's it's definitely a really a really i really like your perspective and um i'm curious too like for having physical evocations in Bar- barton's system um mm. one 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 tool you use is the rosemary tinctures al- along with some other type of fluid condensers i'm wondering gotcha. um, i'm wondering like what because uh, one thing we were talking about is simplicity and like what what's the minimal viable amount you need to get a certain result like with the alchemy lab i'm curious what do you find to be the minimal viable um like n- requirements to have a physical evocation in barden system well if i use if i i think the best way is to compare with and without if i have no no um sulfur of a metal you know i need um 
like I said to you before, because of the fire regulations and the fact that for my house insurance, I have a smoke detector. So Dittany of Crete is out of the question, you know, nothing like that, which is where the essential oils come in. So without, with let, let's say it's um, a solar genie. So I've obviously I can evaporate rosemary oil. That's easy to get. I can evaporate loads of it. So I've got that going. I don't want it in a, a shoe stone. I want it to be manifest in the triangle visibly. So um, magic mirrors, load, load in the area. Um, ideally, Kabbalistic formula, if, if a person has access to that. Um, otherwise, just um, use, use the, the ritual props will help there. You know, the, the, the lamps with the alcohol tinctured with rosemary. Um, loads of solar um, symbolism and colors in the room. Um, and I, I would say if I didn't rely on the, 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 the alchemical products, I would probably need to visit the sphere of soul a few times and talk specifically with the genie about if there was anything that might be particularly helpful, particularly for them. Mm. Um, and then, and then, um, just, just get to it. It would take a lot more effort. I would load on top of the mirrors. I would load a vault into the triangle of art. And I, I, I might even reload it several times and keep it fixed with mirrors. Um, and then do the evocation and truth be told, I might get no more than a minute or two. You know, um, now that's that's just me. Other people may probably get the same result much more easily. I, I, I can only say how how it is for me. Some some people that I've spoken to don't have any of that kind of difficulty when they when, when, when they do an evocation. And that's I, I salute them. Mm. What can I say? But with with the alchemical tincture. Um, it's much easier much easier <laughs> it's much easier i couldn't really quantify the difference i won't i won't bother with a mirror um i would probably just to, as a matter of good form load the triangle of electromagnetic fluid and um i probably wouldn't have to go to talk to the genie a few times beforehand especially if i had had a personal sigil from it so that i would you know there wouldn't be there wouldn't be so much preparation the preparation if you like is making the, the tincture mm. yeah as well. yeah that makes sense and then um have, and what about like a purely energetic approach to evocation is that something you've explored or Pure, you, purely no? energetic mm -hmm. um i'm not entirely sure what you mean mate yeah let's say like you have your your circle and then mm -hmm. and then you have your your triangle and then mm -hmm. you're you are charging up with electric magnetic fluid um mm -hmm. for the energy of the respective sphere and you're you're producing most of the energy for the vocation yeah well that's that's the bit where i have to put more effort in like i was saying that's mm -hmm. kind of um when i put the alchemical liquid in into the triangle in an oil evaporator i the energetic work is not so demanding um so there seems to be a trade-off between the two mm. um so yeah you 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 can evoke a genie with with the the fluids and the, the mirrors and the, you know that, that's assuming you don't want it appearing in the mirror, um, but um, if you want it appearing visibly in the triangle, you you can you just use energetic work and you can use cabalistic formally as well. Um, but that takes more work. I for me it yeah. takes a lot more work. Um, whereas if I have a alchemically produced sulfur of the planetary attribution i can just be a little more chill about it mm. i suppose a little more chill <laughs> yeah cool the, the the godhead stuff is always good to do anyway you know it's yeah. just it's just like why not when, when you do when you do the godhead thing you you you're going to do an evocation of a genie it may be that you've got such a good relationship with that genie that you don't need the godhead, but do it anyway because it's just intrinsically a good thing to do, mm. you know, in and of itself. Um, yeah, 
Hypothetically, if you were going to re-explore working with, say, like the Le Megaton or Hmm. Ar Arbitel or other grimoires, or if you had were going to give advice to folks who are doing that, um, having been now, you know, like like high, being a high-level bardenist with with the whole entire system, what would be the safest approach to re-explore old grimoires, old texts through Well, the I, Barden yeah. text? Well, if you if you haven't got the Godhead going, thwarting angel is a must. So, in other words, if you if you are um, not able to achieve a divine ecstasy such that um, God is coming through you, then visibly have the appropriate angel appear in a shoe stone. and have it agree to help you. And that will do a lot of good um, for when you decide to work with a cliffhotic entity like uh, Le Megaton Spirit. I, I would say though that um, these days I, I agree with Barden, why bother with the negative spirits when the positive ones can help you just as much. But as a, as a thought experiment, you know, to, to, I'm not gonna dodge the question. If you, if you have the Godhead work, um, If you've done that, to be honest, you probably wouldn't bother with the lemma get on stuff. So, so there's a bit of a, a ring pass knot in your question, and I, so I don't mean to be contrary, mm. but I think that if you if you want to do lemma get on, um, you probably haven't got. I'm, I, I would guess you haven't achieved um, step nine and ten of initiation into metics, um, because if you had, you'd be looking at all the wonderful things that these these genii um, can give you. Um, that are outlined, for example, in, in Barden's second book. You wouldn't really be that interested in what the Gemelton spirits were doing. You, you know, you wouldn't really, I suspect you wouldn't be that, that interested in them, honestly. But in it, so therefore we have to assume that you haven't done that, but you still want to do evocation. And that was, again, I'm judging other people as I saw my, as I was myself. I wanted to do evocation, but I couldn't do it Barden's way because I couldn't do the, the, the theurgy, but I still wanted to do evocation. You know, and whilst I was doing Barden's training, I didn't want to wait. Whether that's imprudent or not is for people to judge. Um, so, so yes, thwarting angel at least get support from a positive genie or an angel, um, a Shem Ham Forash angel, um, with, with and 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 ensure that that angel can and will assist you with the specific goetic. spirit that you were planning to evoke and that way if if the the spirit plays up you can literally call upon the angel and there will be an immediate change it's remarkable the the, the spirits the spirit's behavior will immediately change um although although perhaps the underlying um, hostility will remain the actions will be different and that the 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 a, a more civil tongue will be um had fr from from that entity as you as you interact with them mm. and that's perhaps so, so so in a way the, the the question kind of answers itself if you do if you can do barda's level of stuff you don't really care about them get on i suspect and there might be there might be very very narrow applications but nothing springs to mind So, so when it comes to a lot of these grimoire um, entities, it's kind of, I suspect it is as I did it. You only, you only kind of pursue them because you can't do Barden yet. Now, I, I suspect that is the case. I could be wrong, but that's my suspicion. Yeah, I really like your opinion on that. That, that. that was a really great perspective. I really enjoyed that. And I wonder too, like um, for, for folks who may be wanting to um, get more into the Barton evocation and, and, and keep following that path, uh, what uh, the process of, of, of mental wandering is like into the different spheres? And, and then how does that connect back to the evocation? We talked a bit about the glow. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Hmm? It, 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 you see, at the physical level, it's much simpler, but there is a lot going on, in, as, as you clearly know, I can tell by your question, there's a lot more going on. So, for example, you do, you do the Godhead stuff, and then, and then um, my and Jan's approach was that one of us would go to the sphere and um, 
we would use the the if we hadn't contacted the GNI before, we'd use the generic sigil Barden gives us, and then bring back with us to the triangle or the shoe stone or mirror or whatever we might be using, depending on our purpose. It usually wasn't visible manifestation the first time. Hmm. So it would probably be a mirror or a shoe stone. And once the once a genie was present with us in the workroom, we would each then receive a personal sigil from the genie for future work. And then um, at, f- at future work, if you wanted the, the genie to visibly manifest, it's the personal sigil you would use. That, that, and that goes into the Liber Spiritum, your, your personal book of sigils. So when my wife passed, obviously those sigils were destroyed because as Barden points out, they can be abused by other people. Um, the, 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 the genie will readily respond to that sigil, um, even though it's not you. And um, that, that can actually cause problems for the person misusing the sigil. Because obviously, if the genie turns up and it's someone else masquerading as you, they might not be too pleased about that, you know. But uh, nevertheless, people will still do it. So um, yeah, it's a, there's a, there's a lot going. Basically, if if you had someone watching the, the evocation, there's a point where I or I and my wife or I and whoever would be just sitting, and nothing's going on. And dur- during that period. Godhead is being affected, then out of body, going to the sphere, meeting the genie. The genie comes back. The genie's in the shoe stone. I'm in my body. And then we start the material level work. So it's there's a there's a there's there's a mechanism, but it's a universal mechanism. You know, it, it's it's pretty much the same thing for all evocations um whereas with the grimoires all sorts of um equipment and and conjurations vary between grimoires although i was i would imagine there's a there's a basic underlying principle there yeah yeah i'm wondering if um like depending on the various spheres if there's spheres where you encountered more like resistance to like either from the spirits Mm. or or from specific entities and where and if there's other spheres where you felt like you had the most gain um maybe not not because of your own like proclivities or your own constitution but just like what was like like trait personality of of those different spheres well the 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 spheres the, the energies of the spheres um are are an ordeal in and of themselves to be able to assimilate them um and that that is initiatory and they they I mean, Barden points out that some spheres are more more pleasant or unpleasant or more difficult or whatever to others, and that that's certainly true. Um, and you know, you know when you've got a good idea that you've kind of more or less integrated that energy. When, as I say, you get this planet shine effect, and then then you can be fairly certain that although you can carry on working with that sphere, you've you know you you've you've, you've developed a proficiency with that that type of energy, and and you've got a You've got a general proficiency with interacting with the genii of that sphere, mm. but there is there is a um, a trial and there is an effort required to to enter any given sphere for the for, for the first time, um, and some some are more difficult than others, and some are. I mean, as Barton points out, the Saturn sphere can be quite unpleasant, but the the interesting about Saturn is it has a slightly solar feel to it. Mm. It's not the same as the Sun. But it's, I've, I've, I've spoken to other people about this, and uh, there seems to be a consensus. There's almost like a slightly solar vibe to the energy, mm. um, which is, which is, it was a surprise to me when I first, you know, when I, when I first, first encountered that. I expected it just to be all leaden and heavy, and there is that kind of weightiness about it. But there's, there is a warmth, a moment of solar fit, which just, I did, did, did surprise me at the time. Um, but yeah, you, you know. You, you have to, you have to do, sometimes you just have to load the energy for a few, on a few occasions, just to, you know, acclimatize and then go, then go up there and then load the energy again before you then go into the sphere, because otherwise you can't get in um, on the first encounter. And the loading the energy might be, you know, that, that might be a little taxing 
um, initially. It might, it might take you a few weeks of just trying to load this energy before you actually manage to, if you're, on it, if you're entirely honest with yourself, actually do it. Mm. You know? Yeah. Did you find that uh, there was any different constitution of the elements depending on the sphere or plane you're in or Kabbalistic formula or, or types of like generally types of things the spirits could assist you with or teach you? Well, with, with, with the elements that I suppose they you can't say the elements, the four elements are, I mean, it's a bit of a cop out to just say the four elements are present in every sphere, even though that's true. Um, I do differ to some of some of the uh, other folks on my approach to the genome. Um, and I do I do go with Barden in as far as I don't when it comes to the um, further planets, if you like, mm. the sun upwards and um, the outer planets or even extrasolar spheres. Mm. I think that the genome are much more general and broad and they're not really suited to specific tasks at the physical level um, and they're, mu they're much more sort of philosophical and metaphysical kind of things going on there mm. now i know that other people have achieved distinct physical results from from those genii but i also know that they had a rough time doing so and my my approach has been di entirely different to what i've what i've seen other people do um, what, what i do let, let's to use a, a, a brief thought experiment, let's say um, there's a old house that's going to be knocked down. And I think it's very historic and I don't want it to be knocked down. Mm. And the, the person, the person who owned the house has just died. And that's why the authorities now see their chance to develop the area. And I don't want it developed for whatever reason, good or bad. You know, I'm sure there'd be people on both sides thinking either way is good. So, so obviously you, you've got genii in the zone girdle in the earth to help you, but let's say they, they, they can't seem to really bite. So what you could do is you could go to the Saturn sphere because it involved a death. And you could get a broad kind of um, a, assertion from the gene, genii of that sphere and evoke them to the physical to make sure it comes through. And what, what, what I do, is I then taught, say to this gene, I'm also going to work with this gene I in Sol, and it's on an estuary, so it's going to be this gene I in Luna. And then there's a couple gene I in the zone good in the earth that each have areas of expertise for this. And I want you all to work in concert. Now, if you look at um, the Kirscher Tree of Life, you can actually trace a line of force from Keith down to Malchus by doing that. And that's that would be my approach to it. So I would, the, the Saturnian gene I would be in a much broader excepting for the, the matter of the, the death and wills and inheritance itself, which would be specific. Everything else about what that gene I did would be broad, but it would interact with a gene I at Sol, which would also be quite broad, but then it, that would interact with a gene I at Luna, and that would be to do because it's on an estuary. And then the several genes, and they'd all link together and all be aware of what each other were doing, and I would intercede each and that was the kind of thing I used to do before I had the creative word, if I really wanted something done, but I could tell that it was going to be a tough work mm -hmm. and I couldn't just evoke some, you know, it sounds disrespectful to them, but I couldn't just evoke some, some gene from the zone girdle in the earth and get it done. It was going to be much harder than that. I would use the Kircher tree of life and I chain gene I together, but the, the gene I further out would be much more general. And I would be looking to kind of kind of have a knock on effect an analogy would perhaps be this, the pea at the top of the hill and the snowball gradually grows. As you, you flick the pea and the snow collects and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it gets to the bottom of the hill. And that would be the kind of thing I would do. And it might take me two or three months to achieve that. And it would be something I'd focus entirely on. So my, my use of the genii. Um, of the outer planets seems to be different to, to some of the some of the guys that I've spoken to who, who will have a totally different approach to me. They will go out there, they will get a div given material actual thing from the genii and bring it back. Um, I haven't I haven't done it that way. I have, you know, I've, I'd, I'd kind of chain them together. Mm. Is there any last uh, things or bits of advice you'd have for any folks who are wanting to practice the art of evocation? Stick to the positive. Mm. The, the negative ones 
will offer you all sorts of stuff and then you'll realize that you didn't want it when you get it. Mm. Ah, there you go. <laughs> That's good advice. Yeah, and th thank you so much for your time today. Um, are there any pleasure, articles mate. or writings that, uh, that you'd point uh, folks towards? Well, we, really, um, <clears throat> Rand's Barnes' practice of magical evocation is is the it is the golden it is the golden yard, isn't it? Yeah, you know. But by all means, read anything and draw draw from other sources and from other traditions. They've all got something to offer. Hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. A pleasure.